All right, guys. So here we are. We've got all of our stuff uh, to make this trap. Uh, I'm going to show you now what I have here. I've got it pretty much laid out for the most part. Um, what I have here, guys, is everything that you're going to need to do this with. Basically, what I'm going to do is give you an instructional on how to do this. This is one method. There are other methods to making fish trap baskets. Uh, this is just one. Um, so, what I got for you. First of all, tools. You will need, preferably, hopefully, a saw. Okay, for cutting everything down. It makes it easier. You can use a knife, but a saw is much faster, much neater. Okay, saw and a knife. A good sharp pocket knife will work fine. The only thing you're going to need this little guy for, guys, is for cleaning off all these little branches. Okay, just for kind of stripping it. Okay, that's the only thing you're going to need the knife for. And for cutting your cordage. That's it. Okay, um, so what I've got here, guys, laid out is several piles. And what I've done, guys, is I've taken and organize them from small to large. You're going to see I have some very stringy, very thin pieces here on this pile uh, for the most part. Um, and I have a next size up next to it. And then the next size up, then I have some much thicker in diameter uh, pieces over here. Now what I have over here, okay, is uh, some, uh, some willow. Uh, the willow saplings that we looked at earlier. Um, we, uh, we've got these because uh, I don't know if this is going to be enough uh, with the uh, red twig dogwood to do this. So if not, then we're going to use this. And I do think we're going to need it, um, especially once we get into the final phase uh, with the insert piece that goes inside of this thing. All right, now let's move on here. Now what I have here, guys, is I've selected five fairly equal sized and diameter pieces of uh, wood. Now these are from Willow as well. Um, I do believe it could be dogwood. Uh, I don't really remember when I, I grabbed them. I was just kind of in a hurry and wanted to get it done. So I had other things I had to be doing. Um, and also, what I have to go with this, you're going to need a little bit of cordage for wrapping this and locking it down. Okay? And I have this little guy right here. Okay? This is just a little uh, insert that's going to go down in here and help lock everything down. Alright, okay, so this is everything that we're going to need. Um, so, I'm not going to be doing a bunch of talking now, I'm going to stop this, let's move on. And I'm going to I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to move up and uh, get, try to get as best of a, uh, as, as best a view of what I'm doing for you as possible. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll do a little editing and try to, you know, zoom in as much as I can. And, show you fine points. Basically we're going to start, we're going to tie all this down here at the top. Next phase is going to be starting with these super thin small pieces and we're going to weave them in and out, in and out, over and under um, on these five. We're using odd numbers. Uh, if you were to use an even numbers, I'll explain this again later, um, on your, your ribs, you would have to use what's known as a Japanese weave, uh, which I believe is uh, every two and then one as opposed to this western weave that was is every other piece um, over under over under 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 over where however you want to look at it. anyways okay let's move on let's pause this uh and move the camera and we'll see what we can come up with all right guys so here we go uh first thing here guys that uh i suggest is to take your insert piece and uh wrap it with a, a clove hitch okay reason being this is what we're going to tie off onto and this little guy here is going to keep everything secure it's going to tighten everything together we're going to lash all this together up top here super super good all right so i'm going to start with a clove hitch now you can do this any number of ways sit down on your butt and do it if you want to whatever um but uh what i'm going to do here now is i'm just going to kind of slide this up right through the middle of this okay I've got a temporary piece of rope here kind of holding everything together while I'm doing this so hopefully here in a minute I can take that out uh, I like to keep this little insert piece just a little bit higher 
I like to cut them about six, eight inches. Um, that way I can trim it off if I want to. I can, if I need to, I can adjust it any time during this process. Um, okay, so remember to try to keep everything fairly uniform where you want it to be. This will move on you quite a bit, a lot more than you think. But just try to keep everything as uniform as possible. Okay, so now what I want to do here, now I'm going to take off my temporary uh, lashing. Okay, now from here, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a over under kind of lashing. First, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the crap out of this. Uh, and then from there, I'll show you what I mean. Gonna keep everything uniform, as I said, and neat. That's what's going to give you your strength. When you build this thing, you want it to last. I mean, you're going to be putting a lot of time into this. I'm talking hours, not 10 minutes, not not even at one hour. You're talking a long time. That last big one that I made took me over nine hours. And the majority of that was actually getting materials. Okay, so I got me a couple good good rounds on here now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start going over and under each one. Okay. Over and under. Remember we're starting off with five uh, ribs. Uh, do them in odd numbers. Five, seven, nine, etc. Um, if you don't, you're going to end up end up with what's known as a Japanese weave. Um, see, what we're doing is this western weave where we're going over and under each one. Now, with a Japanese weave, you're going to be going over two and then under one. All right, and vice versa. Over and under every two, then one, instead of every other one. Okay? Um, all right, so I'm going over each one of these. And now I'm going to keep going for the second time because we've got odd numbers here. And we have to in order to lock everything in. Okay? All right, so now we got it all locked in. Okay? Don't worry about being all pretty. Just make it functional. Make it functional. Okay? All right. So now what I like to do here, guys, is to go ahead and I'm going to go around, up and over and around. And I'm actually going to come through each point of this, locking it down in a, in a, uh, in a lashing such as what you would use in like a square lashing. Um, but I want this thing to be really tight, really snug. Okay. So I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. I'll show you. You can see that, I hope. As you can see, I'm going up, around, I'm coming in, I want to come out of each one of these. I want every side of this to have this on it. So, again, pulling it through. Same thing over here. There we go, locked in. Okay. All right. Done. So now, I'm just going to tie this off with a good old-fashioned square knot to the tag end on my uh, clove hitch. All right, now if you're concerned about this coming loose, because we all know that <laughs> paracord does not like to hold knots very well. So, back it up with a half hitch for security if you want to. Now the good thing is, guys, the paracord, when it gets wet, your knots will uh, get really, really tight. Um, 
similar like what leather does, you know, it kind of shrinks it and tightens it up. Paracord doesn't like to hold knots very well. Bank line's a whole lot better, but paracord is a lot stronger. But either way, bank line, paracord, natural cordage, whatever, it's gonna work. Okay, so uh, that part's done. Uh, now I wanna keep this end here because uh, there's 10 feet of, uh, we started off with 10 feet of paracord. Now what I wanna do here, guys, is I'm just gonna kinda wrap this up a little bit and put it out of the way here, uh, just in case we have to go back and do any adjustments. Um, so let's get this out of the way and we're going to get on to uh, actually starting to wrap this thing. Okay, so again, this is what we've done. We've wrapped it. We have each piece has a secure hold to it all the way through. Okay, and now we're, we're able to actually basically hold a basic shape to this now. Uh, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our smallest pieces. And I strongly suggest that uh, uh, you take the time before you start doing this to go ahead and clean all the leaves off of these things and the little branches off. All right, it makes it a lot easier, a lot neater. Um, it'll be, trust me, it's what you want to do. Um, so here we go. What I want to do here, guys, is I'm going to take my smallest, thinnest pieces. I'm going to start at the thinnest end and I'm going to start weaving this through, okay? Now you will have to manipulate these little guys a good bit, but that's all right. It's all part of doing it. Okay, I've got that wedged in there. Now I'm just gonna start going over and under each one. Gizmo. Man, you're getting fat, dude. You've been eating. Back here killing eating them darn bunny rabbits again. Gizmo. Gizmo, my kitty cat. He's a good boy. Likes to kill all the rabbits in the neighborhood, though. Hell of a mouser. Alright, anyways. Over and under. Constantly be snugging this up, make sure they're good and tight, good and snug. Sometimes you will have to work these. Don't worry. I'm telling you, these little, these little guys are, these little saplings, these little. Uh, Dogwood things are just, man, they're amazing, so flexible, and they're fairly tough. I mean, they will break on you. You'll end up with probably a 10 or 12 out of this whole mess here that just snap on you, especially when you get to the bigger ones. Believe it or not, you'd think they'd be stronger. You go trying to bend one of those things without working it first, breaking down the fibers inside of it, it'll break on you. And as you can see here, we got over and under, over and under. Remember, this is a very time consuming. So get that into your heads. It's not gonna be a 10 minute thing. So I'm gonna sit back by your fire, have a cold one, have some fun with some friends and just fiddle around with this. Okay, there's your first one. Now what I want to do is I want to restart right where my other one ended. I want to be able to come under it, okay, as I'm going down, under it, like this, 
Hope you guys can see that good. Okay, come under this one here. Remember to go over and then under. Again. Okay. that stick out on you, you'll clean them off later. Okay, and again. Over and under. That's what this whole darn thing is. The whole freaking way. It's just this constant over, under, weave, over, under, over, under. You do this a few times. It goes pretty quick. Some people say it goes quicker at the top than the bottom. But I don't know, man. That last one I made, the last big one, I tell you, I had have more trouble at the end, at the top, the entrance, than I did this little piece at the bottom with the tiny ones. Okay. Not going too bad so far. Okay. Alright. Oh, now as this is going on, this stuff's going to start actually pulling in on you a little bit. So keep that in mind as you're putting this in on how much pressure you're putting on it once you get up to this point up here. Because the tighter this is here, the more it's going to pull together at the, at the entrance. Alright. One more here. And then... And then I'm uh, going to pause the camera. And I'm going to get everything cleaned up. And good to go. That way... We don't have to stop like this. And we can just go ahead and finish the darn thing. Now obviously this is going to take several hours, so this video is not going to go that long. I'm going to edit the crap out of it. Give you guys the best of everything out of it. Okay, so you have the idea at this point. Over and under. Use odd number of ribs. 5, 7, 9, 11. You know, whatever. Over and under. Start with your small ones. Getting down on these older ones, or not older ones, I'm sorry, but thicker ones, you're going to kind of want to work them a little bit to kind of get the fibers loosened up inside of them. Otherwise, they'll, they're liable to snap on you. Okay. Alright. So, there we go. Good little start. Okay. Little pieces like this, you can use your thumb, you can work them. All right, so there you go, we got a good start. Let's get everything cleaned up, and then we'll get this thing finished.